These are some of the most unfairly misunderstood animals. Number 8. The rat. If like me, you used to think that rats were dirty plague spreaders that scratch you up and give you diseases, then here's a fact for you. Rats didn't spread the plague. Humans did. The idea that rats were the main spreader of the plague came from a false idea of how the plague was spread in the first place. Fleas spread the disease, and the creature that spread the most fleas weren't rats, they were humans. According to more recent models that calculate how the plague spread from person to person, models that use humans as the basis of the spread of the plague more closely resemble the data we actually have. Truth is, people were just as dirty as the rats back then, and they came in contact with each other a whole lot more than rats did with humans. When rats are not forced to rummage around the dirty streets, they prefer to clean themselves, just like cats. Now, that doesn't mean rats couldn't spread diseases. They can be infested by fleas, just like any other mammal, but the idea that they specifically are disease spreaders isn't true. But don't use this information to go around and start sniffing every rat you see on the street. Not like you go around sniffing random wildcats now, do you? The best way to avoid getting a disease is personal hygiene. That's a real lesson people should have learnt from the plague. Number 7. The Koala People say koalas are dumb because they have a small brain to body mass ratio at about 1 to 500 or 0.2% and on top of this, their brains are also smooth. They literally started the smooth brain meme. Most marsupials already have a small brain to body ratio. Go up to a kangaroo and call them stupid to their faces, I'm sure they'd love it. Another reason why people think koalas are dumb is because of the fact that they eat eucalyptus leaves, leaves that are poisonous and hold next to zero nutritional value, but in their defence, look at how tall eucalyptus trees are. In a country where most dangerous predators are land animals, adapting to survive in tall trees is a massive advantage. Koalas manage to find the safest way to survive in a country where venomous snakes, dingoes, and giant alligators are rampant. And sure, their diet means they need to be asleep 18 hours of the day, but look at it this way. Koalas manage to found the perfect survival strategy that lets them laze around all day long without a care for the world. In a country where literally everything can kill you. And true, there have been studies that show that koalas don't accept leaves from the ground, although the idea that they would starve to death even though there's food right in front of them hasn't been proven. It's more likely that they don't accept leaves from the ground because they might consider it dangerous to eat. They would rather eat fresh, safe eucalyptus leaves from the trees, considering the fact that they needed to develop their own bacteria to manage to eat what little nutrients they can get out of eucalyptus leaves. It makes sense that they'd be picky eaters. They found a way to min-max their time to be in the safest positions possible. That deserves respect. Number 6. The High Hyena. Okay, right at the start, ignore everything you learnt from the Lion King. Spotted hyenas are their own apex predator that even lions are afraid of, because they have one of the best advantages an animal can possibly have, being social. Hyenas hunt in tribes that number up to 80, making them a force of nature when they choose who to eat. Although a hyena is no match for a lion one-to-one, -one, because of their hunting habits, lions find themselves vastly outnumbered, and hyenas capitalise on this opportunity, oftentimes ganging up on the single lion, and promptly cutting its life short. A cool fact about the spotted hyena is that their tribes are led by the females rather than the males. Female spotted hyenas are generally 10% larger than male spotted hyenas and get first dibs on meals whenever they catch prey. The reason why the food is distributed this way is because the male hyenas are normally immigrants from other tribes, which is why they usually end up chewing bones and whatever's left of the carcasses. Generally speaking, once a male hyena reaches the age of around 3, they're sent out to find another tribe so that they can mate. The reason why they're not allowed to stay inside the their own tribe is because they don't want to risk mating with their own siblings or relatives. Although there are some cases where when a high ranking female dies unexpectedly and they don't have any female offspring, the male offspring then becomes the high ranking leader of the pack. But most of the time the male hyenas are sent off and they have to go start from the very bottom of the hierarchy in another tribe. Once they are there, their best bet is to woo a high ranking female and have children with them so that their kids can pass on their genes and be high ranking in their own right. Some studies show that the male hyenas are actually good parents to their cub, and while the female hyena is out hunting, they can take care of the kids. So although they usually end up last when there's not enough food to go around, they still get some benefit. And let's not forget, female hyenas have one of the worst ways of giving birth. Their uterus is double the length of most similar mammals, extruding from their bodies into a pseudophallus. This makes it hard to distinguish male from female at a glance, but the hardest part about their situation is their pregnancies. Female hyenas have a 20% initial birth mortality rate, and the kids they birth even even if the mother survives, have a 60% death rate due to them suffocating on the way out of the longer birth track. Although in fairness, after the first birth, it's significantly easier for a female to have children. Scientists assume that this weird biology
technology exists to make forced pregnancies harder, giving the female hyena the choice to mate with whoever they want. But this benefit that gives the female's consent also comes back to bite them when it's time to birth a child. And the worst fact is, that hyenas are so aggressive by nature, leaving any cubs that survive the births to commit suicide a quarter of the time when they casually fight each other. Hyenas are just overall pretty unlucky creatures. Number 5. The Llama if you're like me and you thought llamas spat on people because they didn't like them, then you'd be right. But there's a bit more to it. When llamas spit, it's usually a defense mechanism against perceived predators, or done by female llamas towards males when they can't take a hint. But the most interesting part about it is llamas actively dislike spitting on people, because what they're doing isn't actually spitting. Yes, that stuff they spit on you is not just spit, it's mixed with their stomach fluids. They're basically projectile vomiting onto people to make them go away. Obviously, they hate the taste of that spit. So so, whenever they do it, they make a concerted effort to show warning signs beforehand, either by staring at you, raising their chin, or flicking their ears back. Most of the time, they just want to chill. And when they spit on humans, it's usually the human's fault for not noticing the signs beforehand. You should be fine if you don't annoy them. Number 4. The Praying Mantis The idea that the female eats the male after they reproduce or have a child isn't always true. What really happens is the male praying mantis fights female mantises to mate. If the male wins, they mate with the female. Females. If the female wins, they eat the male. The insane part is, the female never willingly mates with the male, since she can asexually reproduce to have a child. Turns out, one of the reasons the female eats the males is because the male is trying to forcibly mate with them. That's a bit more understandable. The males that don't fight back usually get their heads chopped off first, probably so the female doesn't have to keep getting annoyed by the male's advances. But male mantises have managed to adapt their way around this by having another brain right next to their reproductive organs. So basically, Basically, while the female mantis is chomping on the male's head like an apple, the male switches to his backup brain which has one single job, to make babies. Some scientists assume that the female eats the male to have a reliable source of food during their pregnancy period, but I honestly think they just don't want to get pregnant and haven't yet realised where the second brain is. Here are some more misunderstood animals that actually deserve less respect. Number 3. Seagulls Yeah, those annoying rats of the sky that are a pest to your food whenever you go to the beach? Guess what? They're smarter than you think. Seagulls are one of the most intelligent birds, with great memories who are able to communicate and form tactics. They know they're actively ruining your day when they hunt your food, and the reason why they hunt you is because they think you're easy pickings. Number 2. Foxes You might already know that when a fox comes across a bunch of chickens, they eat some and then they kill the rest. Some people assume that the fox does this out of fun, but that's not true. It's much worse. Foxes can only eat about two chickens per day, but once they're full, they worry that the other chickens won't be around the next next day, so they choose to bite the necks off of all of them to make sure they're there when the fox becomes hungry again. So they basically destroy the entire chicken family so that they can have an easier time eating them later on. And finally, we have the cheetah, the Usain Bolt of animals. Well let me tell you, they're hell overrated. Their insane speed comes at the cost of them being too light to actually be a real threat, and they constantly get their kills stolen from other bigger predators like the lion or the hyena. Running is literally the only thing that they're good at, and they're probably one of the few predators in the savannah that you don't have to be afraid of. Because what are you going to do? Run at me? That's going to do it for today. If you liked this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching until the end. Okay, bye.